moment as we get into it here on Alkyoni. Spawning down in the bottom left for Berserker Esports, it is Gung Fu Banda. And up in the top right hand side of the map, we have the blue Protoss player. He is Harstum, Shopify Rebellion. And Alkyoni. Alkyoni. I, yeah, as soon as you said that, I was like, okay, well, we have to match meme for meme. It's, you know, it has to, it has to happen. Uh, there's always Al Capone. Al Capone. Uh, Al Capone. Al Alkeon. Yep. Al C1. There's lots of there's lots of places you can go with that. Let's just figure out how to trigger every person in the chat. Everyone who's watching. Right? Yeah. It's it's so easy. It's so easy. Everyone's just like, but that's not how English is. And I'm like, well, yeah. You're right. See, Dave, and some people say that I'm a really big troll but I feel like you you have that potential to out troll me when you want mm. to. It's I, I always like our troll offs. It's very there there's a lot there. You know, there's there's a lot of uh there's a lot of meta beneath the layers. Like you and I have a, a deep reach his, rich history. It's kind of like these two players uh where they know each other pretty darn well even though they haven't played the most number of series against one another, they are nine and nine in competitive series oh. and 24 and 23 in competitive maps. Just gonna check who has the advantage. It is Harstum by one map, but when it's that close, that one map does not matter too much. It is, th this is gonna come down a lot to mind games, to who can out execute the other and to maybe who makes more sentries. <laughs> Yeah, I was going to say, this has been an interesting time for PvP, but this is also already kind of a small, interesting start. We did have Harstum starting up a Zealot for a split second there instead of the Sentry, just because there's a chance that maybe your Nexus gets blocked on the low ground. You want to have that Zealot start on up, but I guess he felt comfortable that he didn't really need it, and he ends up going for the Sentry, Stalker Sentry opening instead. And Gung Fu Banda is the one that I want to talk about here, because I don't see this nearly as often. A Depth Stalker. That is, I feel like it's usually double stalker. I see double adept. I see stalker sentry. I've started seeing sentry sentry. I don't see stalker adept that often. It's not super common. It's it's one that's relatively new to the metagame. And by relatively new, I mean like in the last, you know, maybe year and a half, year ago, it, it kind of came into existence. And what it allows you to do is still have the fighting power of that stalker but you get the scouting of the adept and you can potentially force shield batteries to be built uh mm -hmm. unlikely that you're going to find the kind of damage that a double adept opener will almost almost impossible in fact in which case unless you're um sorry unless your opponent really flubs the defense in which case a double adept opening would have been really really nice obviously because you know double the kill potential and shield batteries get ignored blah 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 but it's it's an interesting opener I don't know that I like it with the power of the new Sentry as much as it used to be, but it was already kind of somewhat rare as an opener anyways. Regardless, Harstum, very quick third Nexus on the way. And I'm not sure, did he actually scout the Stargate with that initial probe? Can we get a... Oh, well, never mind. He sees it now. That's that's the most important thing. He did see it. Okay. Actually, no, he saw it with a, an earlier hallucination. What am I saying? Wouldn't have been able to, to tell. Yeah. Yeah, when the Stalker Sentry went out to meet the first Adept, I think he hallucinated a Phoenix and got the scout out there. So. Yeah. Should have some information about that. And like you said, or I think kind of alluding to, the Blink opening is going to be usually a pretty effective way to start opening up against someone who did go straight up into Stargate. You eventually are able to push back that uh, Oracle and potentially get the pick off there. But for now, the double Oracle can still try to poke around and find something. Oh, Harsim barely missing out on those Oracles to hallucinate Phoenix. That actually would have been a really nice scout. Just helps you uh, reposition your units even slightly better. Yeah, but uh, utilizing that new pylon vision range buff mm -hmm. and going to allow the pylons that are at the edge of this base to get that or provide that scouting information. Oh, this is cute right here. So <laughs> Gung Fu Banda has identified the very quick third base. Hasn't been able to find any value with those oracles. So instead, he is going to drop a couple of cheeky stasis wards and with the oracles not really being accounted for by Harstum here, even one or two units getting caught in that stasis trap could be big because I don't think Harstum can answer this with his full force. Yeah, this is actually really tricky because the oracles can now dive in behind the natural expansion and mineral line. 
if Hearthstone just sends all of his units over to that third base. And that third base doesn't even have a pile on there. Hearthstone can't even warp in over there defensively right now. He is building that pile, and so he eventually will be able to, but it looks like Gung Fu Bandit is pulling back or pulled back with his army for long enough that Harsim should have the tools he needs to defend this. Well, the interesting thing right here is that uh, Gung Fu Banda is going for, an, uh, well, he went for a very quick immortal. He's going for a second one. He's actually going to have the immortal showing up with this fight right now. Now, Blink oh, is wow. done. Nice job right there from Harsim baiting out the, uh, the barrier on that immortal, but this stasis ward. Harsim's got to be very careful. There we go. He does Blink forward mm -hmm. to trigger it. Guardian Shield getting popped by Gung Fu. Does Harstom? Okay, he One does. More. Oh, does he see it? I'm not sure if he did. There is the Oracles in the main base finding quite a bit of damage here. That is that is a lot of probe damage. Harstom has to be careful. Oh, I don't think he sees it. That's going to be a big one. I almost feel like... All right, that's obviously a very unfortunate one, but if Harsim can reclaim a little bit of ground over here, maybe there's a potential that that still ends up working out okay. He needs to keep these stalkers alive. He needs to keep his probes alive. Say, He's running his probes away, but he can't get through the wall. Well, I was actually going to say, I feel like a probe pull might be really good in this fight. Uh, units that don't really deal particularly well with probes specifically. Oh, please kill that immortal. Okay, he does get it. A uh, lot of probes go down, though. And that was not particularly well handled on the third base, but that is because there was the double oracle in the natural Gung Fu Banda really taxing Harstom's multitasking there. And the captain was, I mean, he was able to survive. And because he had such a quick third nexus, he's not as far behind as he could be. And he will, in fact, still have that blink timing a lot earlier. He's got an, an extra gate, he's quick into charge, and he's got a faster plus one weapons. Honestly, actually, with all that in mind, I. I still don't hate his position. I think he's still kind of fine. I, I don't think Harsim is in too bad of a spot at all because he still has some tools available. I wouldn't mind if he was getting a little bit more aggressive with his stalkers since he does just have 12 blink stalkers to say four for Gung Fu Banda. And again, Gung Fu Banda doesn't even have his blink upgrade just yet. So I wouldn't hate that, but I understand that he's also being a little bit wary about the oracles. He's also trying to expand and take his fourth face and everything right now. So maybe he feels a little bit uncertain that there's going to be maybe some big swell of units coming across the map soon or something. One thing that's really nice for Harstom here um, is the fact that he's playing two... Well, actually, he does add the third gas at the third base, but he's he's putting an extra emphasis on charge lots. And Gung Fu Banda has gone very quickly into quite a few immortals, which is obviously great against Blink Stalkers, but will be pretty ineffective against those charge lots. Like, if... Harstom can find the army of Gung Fu Banda in a bit of an awkward position. Harstom could take a really good fight. The, and the other side of that coin is that if Gung Fu Banda doesn't move out to do something about this gold base, he's going to fall pretty far behind economically. I actually really like this from Harstom. And the main thing he wants to watch out for is this exactly from Gung Fu Banda. When or if does that Templar Archives come down? Yeah, but I think Harsim's timing is going to be hitting before that because the War Prism has now popped out. That's usually the signal for a Protoss player to start getting a little bit more aggressive. Goes for a hallucinated War Prism. It's going to send out that along the bottom side to potentially force some units to maybe even like force a recall back into the main base or something. That would be absolutely massive. But Harsim is going to hit before that hallucination, I think, is going to be arriving in that main base. I would almost like to see him wait just a second just yeah. to try and force that reaction. Uh, looks like Kung Fu Banda does have a good, a good understanding of where his opponent's army is. He's already building. Oh, that's a really nicely placed cannon. Nice little wall for it. Ah, and it does force the warp in. Zealot, only one of them getting caught by this stasis ward. Great force fields from Gung Fu, and there is an Archon in this this fight for Gung Fu. So I think this is going to be just totally fine for him, at least in the initial wave. Harstom though. Maybe it might be an opportunity for him to wait for plus two weapons, but instead he is going to continue teching up, continue expanding, and going to try and find maybe, uh, well, he's not going to try and find a win, but might try and find a, a little bit of a different angle at least. Yeah, I, I think it's going to be very tough to make it work from that angle, especially with more Archons being made. I think that Ooh. almost ended up working out as a little Double bit of a choke point with the Nexus and everything else there. So I actually like that Hearthstone just kind of backing off and trying to tech up. Oh, that is so huge for Harstom right there. He finally kills one of the Oracles. Those are always a threat to just gun down probes when there are two of them. One can still technically do it, but two is, of course, that one-shot potential where shield batteries can't 
uh, you know, protect. Nice little blink forward from Harstom, but Gung Fu Banda on the micro. It ends up being a one-for-one -one trade. Stalkers spot this real war prism now, but it is plus two weapons versus plus one, and that is, of course, an advantage for Harstom. Yeah. Shield Battery is going to be able to protect those uh, probes against the little Stalker run by there. War prism gets spotted out again, but the Zealous drop out and actually take care of these Stalkers. The War prism gets sniped off by the Stalker warping in the main base, though. Nicely handled there by Gung Fu Banda. Yeah, nicely handled by Gung Fu, but also Harstam still able to get some value, at least with those Zealots. And I am still liking this position for Harstam quite a bit, especially with Disruptors hitting the field and Gung Fu Banda not, not really knowing about it. Gung Fu Banda has not been able to get any relevant scouting information of his opponent's main base. Uh, nice playing forward does find the Observer, and that's big in these fights, particularly with Disruptors hitting the field. But if Harstam can keep these Disruptors <laughs> hidden... Actually, did Gung Fu... Do you know if he uh, tagged the Watchtower at all here? I no, he didn't tag the watchtower while the disruptor was making his way forward. But I don't know if he was just on the, vi uh, the edge of vision, but now the observer sees it. Disruptor number one gets a couple of zealots, not terrible, but the kind of surprise factor Ooh. is gone there. Nice stasis trap. It does catch a lot of these zealots, but Ooh. even after the stasis trap expires, you still have to have the units there to deal with that. So Harsim is going to try and continue the pressure forward and be as annoying as possible during all this. Absolutely. Now, I do want to note that uh oh this is a nice nice set of units here to deal with this for gung fu that is really gonna shred this army uh i do want to note that the sentries just went down for harstam and that means that he will not be able to hallucination scout the way that he has been uh we are gonna see phoenixes being utilized it looks like ooh disruptors looking for an ambush but not able to find it harstam is walking into a potentially dangerous surround right here he's gonna try and blast through the one side recalling the disruptors out Oh, this is a weird who's flanking who situation. Oh my god. I, that was a really scary spot for Harstam, and I know that that was not ideal for him, but the way that he handled that was actually incredible. Mm -hmm. When he recalled the disruptors, because he knew that those were going to be the least mobile units, he had the zealots leading the charge, and they were able to get in from around the other side, and he was able to blink the stalkers across the army of Gung Fu Banda. And he somehow managed to make it out of there with a surprising amount of supply. I actually think there's a lot of players who would be in that situation. They'd feel like they just have to commit over there and they get surrounded and actually potentially picked off. Yeah, I, I actually do agree with that. The crisis management for a very awkward situation was very good for Harstam. Uh, even if it looked a little bit ugly, it could have been so much worse. Now, it is very important to note, Harstam has really lost hard in the Observer Wars. It is three to zero right now. And specifically trying to find value with disruptors is very difficult when you don't have that information. He will... I, the, the interesting thing is you do get information with the disruptors, but it's not as though he's got like eight or nine, so he can just throw them out constantly. Like four disruptors, you don't want to be using them for scouting. And there we go. We do see that observer speed as well as a couple more observers getting fired up here for Harstam. Yeah, I'm actually really interested, not only by the Dark Shrines that are coming out for both these players around <laughs> the same time, but plus one air weapons going to be finishing up over here. We are going to have double Stargate production picking off soon for Gung Fu Banda, but he is currently just supply capped. He's at 198 supply. So these couple of Phoenix are going to be able to do some lift ups on those disruptors. But is it going to double down even more into that? In the meanwhile, we are seeing some pretty nice zealot run bys over the top left hand base. Yeah, actually finds a fair bit of static fence damage. We are going to see a skirmish still happening in the middle of the map. It's weird to say where the main armies are because they're both so big on each side, but they're they're constantly trying to out position and out maneuver each other. Okay, once we saw the fleet beacon, I was wondering if we were going to see this, the carrier transition. Mm -hmm. He obviously got that Anion Pulse crystals, but <laughs> PvP turns into a very different scenario. This is quite funny as we... <laughs> We've that got Harstam so stealing a base and setting up some really nice static defenses against Gung Fu. Uh, but Gung Fu's much quicker into the air transition. Having that plus one air weapons could be a big deal in the future if it ends up uh, if it ends up going into a carrier versus carrier war. But we mm -hmm. are still a ways away from that potentially happening. Yeah, because like you said, or kind of are alluding to, Harstam is not really doing that same transition himself. And that is also in some ways going to put a timer oh. on Harstam. Harstam going to get caught with a lot of his stalkers out of position. The Zealots are going to get hit by some of these disruptors, but Gung Fu Banda picking up some very, very nice kills on that stalker count. 
Yeah, that was a big overcommitment from Harstam here. And he he has been finding a little bit of value, but it feels like he's really trying to force the issue. And he hasn't been able to... It feels more like he, he's trying to force the game to come to him as opposed to kind of letting and taking the opportunities as they arise. And I, I do get that. Mm -hmm. Gung Fu Banda is a really strong defensive Protoss, but I, I kind of wish he had started his own Fleet Beacon transition a little bit earlier. Gung Fu Banda is actually moving through the middle. Oh, and that's a lot of DTs that are going to go down for very little gain. Carrier does get intercepted and killed off, and another one almost going down. Mm -hmm. uh, but Harstam's just Harstam's lost a lot. He definitely has. And we have a funny situation where Gung Fu Banda is actually taking his gold base, which is now kind of isolating Harstam's hidden base that he's stolen from his opponent. We'll, we'll see if, when he actually ends up discovering that. But Harstam kind of has a very clear idea of what's going on in terms of the tech choice here for Gung Fu Banda. And now it is really a question of can he find a way to put the pressure on and find an actual opening on Gung Fu Banda's oh. army before that carrier army gets a little bit too large. He's doing a good job of these disruptor connections, able to soften up a lot of those units, but not actually knocking out the immortals, not, not actually knocking out a lot of the power units there. Yeah, uh, Gung Fu Banda doesn't know about this base, right? Like, there's there's no, no. way. Uh, we Otherwise, he would just kind of pick it off there. We are going to see another aggressive move coming in from Gung Fu. Harstam forced to use disruptors more so defensively than anything. Oh, no, he does see it. Oh, oh wow, that's yeah. very funny. Okay. Uh, but okay, now uh, maybe maybe he just saw it. Yeah, yeah. So he warps yeah. in some zealots. We'll send him down here. Battery overcharge plus cannons plus DTs plus a small zealot warp in is gonna complicate this. I think Harstam wants to draw more army of Gung Fu Banda over to deal with this. He is gonna go for a big rotation on the right side. DT will get mm -hmm. revealed in a moment. He does force a recall. Oh, that's a nice recall actually. Just recalling the immortals, getting them right into the fight. Really nicely done. A lot of times you see Protoss players just recalling kind of willy-nilly, but that was a, a truly strategic recall. Ooh, that walling in over there for Hearthstone actually ends up working out quite well because the Zealots and the DTs hold the line against a superior number of those Zealots for Gung Fu Banda by enough time for more Warpins to come on out. Remember that there is still a timer here. Hearthstone, he has been doing a great job of doing these one-two punches, hitting on the left and the right-hand side, or say defending on the right hand side in enemy territory but yeah. the carrier count is going to continue to build up parson has to keep resetting it or doing something about it because ultimately there is a really difficult pill to swallow if your opponent just gets enough carriers it feels almost impossible to just take the fight you can have as many stalkers as you want but it's just very difficult to take the fight against a superior number of carriers that are well upgraded they just start devastating your army a little bit too quickly so parson has to get something done I will say that the, the upgrades for Harstam Stalkers are amazing, and that can mitigate that timing a little bit, but eventually you do hit a critical mass. Now, Gung Fu Banda is going to be able to defend this gold base. Uh, this base in the bottom center almost feels like a bait. Now, there is an Artosis <laughs> pylon, and that's a problem, but now we're finally going to see a, a truly significant amount of army go, and that is Harstam's opportunity. He will draw this entire army over. Recall has been used up. I would love to see Harstam, yeah, kill this base maybe first. But now it looks like he is a little bit worried about that number of static defenses. Ah, and it looks like Gung Fu Banda. Th this is actually not as much for Harsim as I thought it would be with this army. Eventually, these stalkers will tear down this base if Gung Fu doesn't react. But, ah, that's a lot of zealous warping on in. No ability to cancel them. Depowering the two cannons. But on the other side, we are going to see Gung Fu Banda say screw it and start to move forward with this. Very nice static defense yield field here for Harstam. Going to slow that down a lot, but I, I'm not even sure who I favor right now. This is such a weird situation. Uh, I'm fa I'm really favoring Gung Fu Banda right now. Although oh! the disruptor hits are pretty massive. Killing off all of these immortals right now. The carriers are still going to reign supreme for now, but... Uh, the stalker count for Harstam is there. Most of them are on the top left hand side. They're knocking out these fresher bases and everything that Gung Fu Banda has on the left hand side. But Harstam is also losing his own economy. He still has a bit of a bank to work with. He can still warp in a lot more stalkers, but I, I think there's still going to be a question Can Harstam win a direct fight? Well, I think he can now after he takes down all those Archons and uh, mm. and so much of his opponent's army. Harsim has had a huge bank and a really... Well, actually, the economies overall have been not too bad. But he's he's just been making less expensive units. Oh, now this is a big overcommitment. 
those phoenixes have provided so much more value than I would have ever expected. A lot of stalkers mm -hmm. getting caught on move command. Oh man, that was painful. We do see Hearthstone finding the gold base, but I, I don't even know, man. This is just such a chaotic game between these two. It really is. I, I think there's one big fear that I have right now, which is Gung Fu's army. I would say a lot of the firepower is coming from three things, right? It's carriers it's phoenix and it's zealots mm. right now harston's army is the stalkers which of course is going to be important it's like his necessity for dealing with the phoenix and the carriers but the destructors unless they catch the zealots at a weird angle the zealots are going to complicate things so much because the stalkers can't just blink underneath these yeah. carriers they can't just pick them off so easily so i feel like gung fu band is just continuing to take better trades whenever they actually end up skirmishing a little bit and i think harston's main advantage is he's just so mobile right now he is super mobile, but that's where those Phoenixes really shine is when the Stalkers mm -hmm. kind of probe forward. I mean, once a Stalker is lifted, it's dead, you know? Assuming, of course, that it's that hit and run tactic that we see from Harsten, which is what we've been seeing pretty much uh, maybe the last, like, 12 minutes or so. Uh, this has been such a such a neat little game. Uh, plus three shields will be really beneficial. Oh, nice disruptor <laughs> shot right there. Able to take down two Archons. The other thing is... The Archons make it so you can't, uh, even more so than the Zealous, I would say, can't blink in. But that's a huge couple of Disruptors. It does come at a hefty cost to that Disruptor count. As we're going to see, I don't think there's any detection for Harstam right here. These DTs, these Zealous, these Archons are really getting big damage done. Harstam actually blinked forward at the tail end there on that army. Uh, it's even now, it is still so close in terms of supply. Carrier count is nice, but it's not at that critical mass yet, I think. Yeah, five carriers is a lot, and it can do pretty well. But I think the important thing is that Gung Fu Banda needs to make sure that it's supported by a lot of these zealots on the low ground so that it can at least prevent the stalkers from just blinking underneath the carriers, getting those big pickoffs like you were talking about. And that the Phoenix can also help support. Mothership is there as well. Disruptor count being reset there for Harstam really makes things quite complicated, I feel like, because there's one Disruptor, that's it. And it's about to potentially get lifted over here if these Phoenix manage to secure enough space for it. Uh, this is, yeah, the one Disruptor just got lifted. It's just basically a Stalker army for Harstam now. Yeah, and he is kind of getting pinned down a little bit on this side. We do have a bit of harassment. There it is, DTs mm -hmm. on the base that Harstam originally went after. And look at this, they're matching blow for blow once again. DTs now coming in. We will see Harstam denying this base on the right side. And that's a that's a very important pickoff because Gung Fu Banda's economy, that is his biggest issue in this game. It's not the strength of his army. It's the fact that Harstam has used that mobility so effectively and is really starting to whittle down Gung Fu Band. And actually this DT is going unanswered in the gold base, finding a lot of value. Gung Fu Banda just, you've said it already, he has to keep his whole army together and it's its making things so difficult for him. It really is. Oh, pick up on an observer over there that Gung Fu Banda had. DT is maybe a little bit more effective with that, but the Phoenix pick off Harstam's own observer. So he's able yes. to keep his uh, observers alive. Live. Harstam still has four observers out on the map. He kept that base in the top left-hand side alive. And he's continuing to shut down these bases. Gung Fu Banda, I, I'm actually starting to wonder, like, what is the right choice in this situation? Do you just make your big death charge and start taking the, the L's in terms of losing some of these fresher bases? Try to just knock out your opponent's production instead of going for all the, the extra expansions? Like, I, I actually don't know. This is such a tough call for Gung Fu Banda. It is a really tough call. I... Uh, <laughs> Harstam is starting to really take advantage of the size and spread outness of this map. Nice playing forward there, able to kill the Nexus, no cancel, which normally isn't a big deal, but Gung Fu Banda is flat broke. Um, and also able to trap a couple of Zealots. Gung Fu Banda, for a little bit there, was not mining any gas whatsoever. He yeah. is also, he, he's on a gigantic army, really powerful army. But how do you keep Harstam from base trading you? Anytime you go in, that's the thing. You you kind of can't. Harstam finally going to go for his own Stargate and Fleet Beacon transition. At this point, normally I'd say Tempest would be a good answer, but with so many Phoenix on the field, and those are 3-1-2 Phoenix, I, I don't know. A, a Fleet Beacon transition from Harstam feels scary with such poor upgrades. 
Yeah, that is a very interesting point. It, it, it's kind of this one weird complication. Harstim is doing an incredible job shutting down the economy of Gun Fu Banda. At some point, Ooh, Gun Fu Banda the is going to get fed up with everything. Ooh, nice pick off on a couple of those Phoenix over there. But eventually, Harstim is, unless he's able to just gradually chip away at Gun Fu Banda's army slow, so slowly that he's able to eventually overpower it with just sheer economy. At some point, he's going to have to take on the army. So yeah. what do you do? <laughs> well, at the very least, I really wish he would have started up the um, the air upgrades a while ago. He could have been on like plus three weapons by, ooh, by ooh, now, ooh, but he's going to go for a blink forward, kills one carrier, does lose a lot of stalkers. And those Phoenixes, they know that the stalkers blink is on cooldown for a little bit. So they're able to get a lot of pickoffs on the chase. Harstam, though, goes for his own carriers now. The thing is... Huh, I wonder how many carriers Harstam needs to just be able to win the fight despite the air upgrade differential because the mothership complicates things, the phoenixes will shred interceptors very quickly, and the carriers are just higher quality for Gung Fu for a while in terms of those upgrades. So I'm actually, I'm not sure what the magic number is that Harstam would need before he reveals that. Gung Fu Banda with a lot of zealots on the top side. Battery overcharge. Is that going to be enough to bridge the huge differential? Well, with a DT there, the answer is going to be yes. Yeah, he's going to have to back off over there, but this is a nice one-two punch from Gung Fu Banda. He's actually shutting down two, or at least sh shutting down the bottom right-hand base and at least forcing some more units in the top left. So that kind of means that Harsim can't really defend the bottom right-hand base. He's not going to be at risk of losing a bunch of his carriers over there. And at the same time, Gunfu Bandit, he's been able to get up some mining in that bottom right-hand base as well. He's able to recall some of these Zealots out. I feel like Gunfu Bandit, he's getting closer and closer to actual max out. Mm -hmm. If Gunfu Bandit hits a max out point, I know that Harsim is gearing up for a carrier versus carrier battle as well, but Gunfu Bandit, he will still win if they just fight head-on versus head-on armies right now, I feel. Yeah, and he'll win pretty hard because that carrier transition is mm -hmm. in such it's uh, an early stage of infancy. I, I want to explain. Oh, okay. Oh, Harstam. Okay, he's going to kill off some of his own units off screen uh, so that Gung Fu Banda doesn't realize necessarily how much Harstam is transitioning. I want to talk about that trap, by the way, on the Phoenixes from a little bit earlier. Uh, Harstam had been sending small amounts of stalkers to that natural, and Gung Fu Banda had responded with just Phoenixes about two, maybe three, maybe even four times. So Harstam anticipated that and sent over a few ex well, not just a few, like 20 extra stalkers. And that was why he was able to get a couple of pickoffs on his opponent's Phoenixes. Very nice move uh, from Harstam. And that's why I was like, ooh, the trap. It was a, it was a cool setup. But uh, we are going to see Gung Fu Banda finding quite a few stalkers on this top side again. Another thing that we haven't talked about, because there's so much to talk about in this game, is the fact that the Observers have made it, or pardon me, the Phoenixes have made it so that Harstam just can't have Observers yeah. in most of the fights. With with range on the uh, Phoenixes, it makes things so difficult. Yeah, I, Harstam's lost nine Observers because, like you kind of were alluding to, there's no other air units until, you know, very recently there's carrier production and stuff for Hearthstone, but there's no other air units that the Phoenix will naturally just attack. So naturally, the only unit that Gung Fu Banda's Phoenix will just attack without having to lift something is just Observers. Mm -hmm. So Hearthstone just Ooh. ends up losing them in almost every single one of these fights. And here we go. It seems like Gung Fu Banda is finally pushing on forward. This is not even a mining base which kind of signals to me that Gung Fu Banda is not just going to stop over here. I, I think he may actually continue to push forward. Ah, there is strong potential. He knows where a lot of Harstam's army is. And like you said, I think he knows that his army is quite a bit stronger. Harstam is getting in towards those carriers in meaningful numbers now. He's about to be on nine carriers, get, about to get his own mothership. And he has finished up plus two ship weapons. So it's maybe not a fully grown uh, carrier transition, but it is, you know, in its awkward teenage years now. And it is starting to become more meaningful. Yeah, I mean, eight carriers is definitely nothing to, to sneeze at. Nine carriers now out on the map right now. And like you said, those upgrades are still coming along as well. Phoenix are going to start knocking out some of those interceptors. Time warp's coming down for both sides of the time warp for Gung Fu Banda. He's baiting Harsim further and further into his own time warp. He's having to retreat back, though, as Gung Fu Banda falls in supply. Harsim remains maxed out. The Stalker reinforcing warping. And Harsim has bought enough time. He made that transition happen. And I feel like he just sees control of this game. I think he did. You know what? I said it was a teenager, but it was much more mature than that. It was ready to go. It was, you know, 
23 years old, it had a blog. <laughs> that carrier transition was full of gumption, piss, and vinegar, and that will be enough, I think, to maybe take this one down. We are going to see Gung Fu Banda jumping on this army, but as the carriers, oh man, they are just going to reign supreme. Harstum is able to take an absolute banger of a game number one. Wow, uh, that was a wild, wild way to start that uh, series. But yeah, I, I think you were talking about this earlier. I really want to point out how important this is. The carrier transition and the upgrades, the weapon upgrades for those carriers is so crucial. The fact that Harson was able to get up to plus two air weapons. And actually at the very end, I think we were maybe 10 seconds away from plus three air weapons finishing up there for Harson and kind of maxing everything out on that regard. Carriers up or benefit from upgrades more than almost every single other unit in StarCraft. The reason why is because each carrier upgrade improves the attack damage of the interceptors by one, but it's one damage and the interceptors attack twice every single time. And there's eight interceptors. So every upgrade is basically so one volley of interceptors, it's plus 16 damage for each upgrade. That adds up so quickly. So plus two weapons is plus 32 damage for every single one of the interceptors attacking once. Plus three weapons is even more, which I'm not gonna do 48. the math for because I'm already, it's too early in the morning for me mm -hmm. to do that simple math. I got you covered. It's 48 damage there on that one. I've been doing all these little brain training games to make myself <laughs> age slower because that's where I am just now. You know, I'm 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 turning 35 this year. I'm, I'm not a young, I'm no spring chicken as they say. <laughs> Uh, not like these these young young pro gamers, who <laughs> barely in their late twenties. You know they're yeah. they're 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 grooving. Uh, but that was that was such an interesting thing, and I'm really glad you made that point because if Gung Fu Banda had been able to find an opportunity to push across the map when it was plus three, I think it was three one three on the carriers of Gung Fu versus mm -hmm. two zero three of Harstum's carriers, or or sorry, at one point it was one zero three. If he yeah. gets in there. When it's one zero three, and you know there's only maybe five six carriers on the field, I think Harstum just gets caught. But he did such a good job of keeping his opponent guessing, and by the time Gung Fu Banda finally did feel secure to move out, it was too late. It was too late, and that carrier transition won the game for Harstum. Really, so not just an intense multitasking war between the two of them because it was, and it was a good one, but it was also a really smart calculated game from both of them and really really cool stuff harstum while he's spawning up the top left for the shopify rebellion he's up 1-0 and over the top right hand side of the map we have the red protoss player he is gung fu banda yeah i i really do want to actually credit harstum a lot for that game because i will say if you're a pro, if you're a protoss player at almost any level all right i don't actually even think that you need to be a grandmaster or an EPT European top level pro to appreciate this. Try just playing a PVP where your opponent is on like five or six carriers and you're just playing blink stalkers. Mm -hmm. And you're trying to play the, I can't take a direct fight route. It is so difficult to actually pull off. It is mind numbingly difficult and stressful because you feel like I have to constantly avoid my opponent's army. I have to constantly find damage and constantly expand and try and do all these uh, things to exploit the, you know, the ridges, the edges of the map where I'm taking out bases, but also re-expanding and sneaking a base into one of your uh, bases on your side of the map so that you draw additional units there so that my stalkers can run in. It's like there's so much extra yeah. effort and work put in to just avoid your opponent's army and gradually get your own stuff up. So I, I really have to credit Harsum with that. That is a stressful game to watch, but an even more stressful game to play. And he pulled it out really, really beautifully. I, I fully agree. Uh, I also do want to give a ton of credit to Gung Fu Banda as well, because that was also an uncomfortable position when Harstum knocked out those two bases on the left side. Mm -hmm. His influence on the map shrunk so much. Up until that point, he'd been answering toe-to-toe -to -toe with Harstum in terms of like, the multitasking war, the zealot run buys, things were very uh, kind of, it was very much, it felt even, even though it was, uh, you know, they were going for different unit compositions, things were very much 
kind of in flux a little bit in terms of like, oh, it's kind of hard to tell who's ahead, blah, blah, blah. But they were they were battling quite a bit for a position. But once he lost that those two bases on the left side, trying to contest an opponent who has taken as many bases as Harstam has becomes so difficult. But I don't know. I'm just super impressed with both of them. Uh, we are going to be yeah. seeing a quick expand, by the way, from Harstam. Gung Fu Banda will get into the main base and will scout that it's a robotics facility follow-up. He is going for his own Stargate. We're going to see an expand behind this from Gung Fu, but Harstam is going to have a significant worker lead. That Oracle is going to have to put in some work. Yeah, it was Ooh, certainly going to have to do something. But there's also, you know, the four Stalker opening over here, which also gets scattered out by the Lucian Phoenix. So I really don't hate when the Protoss player who goes for four Stalker is just a little bit more aggressive poking forward. It gets maybe a bit scary when now there's so many Sentry openings and stuff coming on up, but... This is a, a cute little pro that we're seeing Mappy showing us off over in the top bottom left hand side. So maybe it's looking to throw down like a proxy pylon or something over here. No, actually just scouts out a uh, hidden pylon there from Harstam. Nice. Yeah, that is pretty nice. Um, meanwhile, an equivalently great scout for Harstam. He finds his opponent's uh, Phoenix, or part of his opponent's Oracle with the hallucinated Phoenix. We are going to see Gung Fu Banda drag that hallucination back in. I don't think that Hallucination saw the second Oracle, but oh, he actually turns around with the other one. Uh, Harstam behind this. Oh, he canceled his Robo after it was scouted and goes for the Quick Twilight, so it will be Blink once again. That is a very neat little mind game here from Harstam. Gung Fu Banda getting Ooh. caught by the sentries. The force field on the ramp is very good, but now the Oracles get into the natural. It will be uh, a lot of probes going down here. Oh, and Gung Fu Banda is going to find more in the main base. Good, clean Oracle Micro. Grabbing eight probes in total, and that is the kind of damage that Gung Fu Banda needed to find. Yeah, what a crazy set of uh, 30 seconds, I would say, in this game, where we ended up seeing, like you were saying, Gung Fu Banda kind of getting caught with a bunch of his actual core units, but then still finding all the damage, because if all the units are Hearthstone are chasing down these stalkers and mm -hmm. finding good damage and picking them off, that means that there's actually not that much protecting the mineral lines. So Gung Fu Banda able to do the nice micro on both fronts, getting that Oracle uh, to micro around, and Keeping them both alive is just going to be a continued threat. Even as Blink finishes up, those Oracles can still find some value, even if it does become a little bit harder to find it. You got to be so careful with those Oracles because their their big value is keeping them alive. Speaking of which, oh, even though that was calculated, I'm still always scared when I see like an Oracle on that low HP turn around to cast a spell. I'm like, is that yeah. the right move? Are you, you sure about this, bud? And then the Oracle <laughs> pilot's just like, he screams, you know, some kind of, vague profanity in, in Protoss, and you're like, oh, okay. Yeah, you're fine. Yeah. But I mean, I love that he was able to get into that position now, because even with Blink, it's really annoying. You know that those Oracles are there. You're wondering, do I have to leave some Stalkers over there? Will I just rely on the defensive oh. warp? And it looks like the Stalkers are left there. It catch the Oracle. That he is didn't put it on really hold position. Yeah, exactly. It, it's This is the purpose of the Lucian Phoenix. It's not just to keep vision. It's to force the oracles to automatically move forward so after the spell got cast the whole position was like no longer there on that oracle and it got pushed out that is really really nice heads up play from harsom he tried it initially gung fu band was on top of it but as gung fu band was microing the oracles to you know go for revelations try and keep track of his opponent's army hold that Ooh. thought big force fields very nice find for harsom here he's going to kill both immortals and with blink off of cooldown Gung Fu Banda is going to take some big losses. He will find all of his opponent's sentries. So Harstam loses out on that scouting potential. But very good trades for Harstam. Oh, if he can find that last Oracle, he does! Look at the stalker count. It's 14 to 3. Oh, this is so good for the Dutch Protoss. I'm actually really concerned for Gung Fu Banda right now. Gung Fu Banda is still waiting for his big gateway floods to finish up. He's getting a couple of these gateways up. He's waiting for charge. But like you were saying, the stalker count is so massive right now. Gun Fu Bandit doesn't even have a Zealot on the map, much less charge actually finishing up to make use of it. He doesn't have a third base. Harsum can put pressure on and continue to try and snipe off more of these immortals. He may be able to go for a kill move. Even if he doesn't kill him, if he finds any damage over here, this is actually still going to be nice for Harsum because he has a third base behind this. Exactly. He's got that third base. He's got that gateway explosion coming on in. It is, I guess it's less of an explosion and more of like, a, you know, those fireworks you get from those those weird places on, I don't know, for Americans, 4th of July, whatever, whatever you celebrate. <laughs> They're like uh, a shipping container. 
but he will be able to still find some good trades. Like you said, Gung Fu Banda committed hard into gateways behind this, and he is going to need basically a miracle at this point to be able to find anything in this game. Harstam knows there's no third base. He knows how committed Gung Fu Banda is. There is that DT shrine behind this, but this first attack needs to get big value. Yeah, just the fact that Harstam was able to trade out against so many of these immortals means that Gung Fu Banda is already in a much weaker spot. Zealot's already in decently large numbers over here for Harstam. There are some force fields available here for Gung Fu Banda to try and negate the power of those Zealots, but shield batteries, four of them coming on up for Harstam is going to be so 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 oh, much prism. oh the war prism oh no yeah. oh no uh oh, dave oh dave and now the zealots might just scout the dark shrine we're even gonna see the immortal getting caught a little bit on the backside if the blink forward finds it that would be huge can he get that oh yes he does the zealot the hero zealot that's the one with the scar scar over its eye that led the charge in the legacy of the void cinematic providing that high ground vision to get the last shots and with the scout on the Dark Shrine, Harstam, all he needs to do is not take critical damage to these DTs. And I think he is kissing... Wait, what? I don't know. He's going to make it into the playoffs. <laughs> I was like, he's he going to kiss the, something. kiss something goodbye? Like, no, he'd kiss the group stage goodbye? Yeah, it's... This is so tough. Oh, There's four of these DTs over here. The Observer is... Chrono boosting out. Not out. Yeah, it's still coming out. It'll get there eventually. Oh, there's no Gunky cannon. Yeah. Uh-oh. This, this is so much to ask for. It, yeah, yeah. It's, I think it's too much to ask for. We are going to see the Observer finishing up very shortly. Battery overcharge getting popped. It will get targeted down very quickly. But there is the Observer. Blink forward grabs Gung Fu Banda's Observer. GG gets called. And Harstam, he can kiss the group stage goodbye because he is headed to the playoffs yep i committed <laughs> there we go we found it we found the plot we found the plot guys uh very very well done there Game